A lot of people have been asking my opinions about this whole thing of Donald Trump, you know, selling King James Bibles. What do you think about this, Brother Brian, and whatever? Well, I'm going to tell you what I think based upon the scriptures. Um, <clears throat> first off, obviously, I have many issues with Donald Trump. I've spoken against him. Uh, the man has very poor moral character. Um, he was trained by Jesuits at Fordham University. I have lots of issues with the guy. Um, obviously, oh, he's selling King James Bibles to try to get money. You're not going to get that much money selling the kind of Bible that he's selling. Okay, that's not some kind of big money-making scam or whatever else. Um, there are deeper implications there, and I understand that. And you can get into all that stuff. But I want to read a scripture here, which is where I think with this whole thing. Um, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. I exhort, therefore, that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all, who will have all men to be saved and to come to, under the knowledge of the truth. This book is truth. And what I see with this whole thing, obviously Donald Trump is a faker and whatever else. I'm not saying that I think he's going to get saved or whatever. That's not what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is I'm going to look at this whole thing from a different light and say, you know what? I'm glad that they're mentioning the King James Bible. This Steve Bannon or whatever the guy's name is, he's another Jesuit trained guy, buddy of Trump. It was in Trump's administration. And he said about Donald Trump is going to win the election and he's going to swear his oath on the King James Bible. They have their little schemings. They have their little plans and whatever else. But I look at it and say, I would rather have them talking about the King James Bible than have them saying, we want to sell this copy of the Catholic Catechism or the Dewey Reams or something, and we're going to be forcing all people in the future to become Roman Catholic. The fact that they're having to mention the King James Bible tells me that there's still enough strength within the King James Bible believing movement to make these people be afraid to make them think we better respect the God's true word. And so I'm going to rejoice in that. Why? Because I want to, uh, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Um, I don't want to just look and say, okay, you know, it'd be wonderful if things would just fall apart and then we were having to run around in house churches and I'm going to prison and I'm getting beaten publicly and Christians are being executed and whatever. I'd like to live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Um, put kjvm.org on my vehicle and, and have, you know, scripture verses and whatever else, and I can go around carrying a Bible, and that'd be nice. Um, and looking at the liberal left and what they want to do, these people hate Christians. They hate the Bible. They're trying to ban it. They're trying to put people like me in prison. So I'm not going to be voting for Trump. Please understand that. But what I'm saying is, you know, Paul went before Caesar. He didn't, you know, I'm not talking to Caesar or something like that. We should be doing things, whatever we can, to pray for those that are in authority and say, I want to lead a quiet and peaceable life. It's nice to see a guy that they're going to be probably putting in as president. It's nice to see him talking about the King James Bible. Obviously, he's not living by it. I get that. But what I'm saying is, I rejoice to, to see the name of the King James Bible being put out there. And maybe there will be some of these wicked people that will have it in their home and be a little bit more open to the possibility of true salvation in the future. That's how I look at the whole thing. I don't look at it as some kind of this, oh, oh it's this deep Q-inspired, QAnon-inspired evil Jesuit plan and scheme and whatever, and they're going to try to guilt through association. All that stuff could happen, but you know what? God's in control. And the powers that be are ordained of God. Romans chapter 13 talks about that. Uh, you don't just submit blindly to them, but they're supposed to be there as a terror to evil people and not to the good. We'll go to Romans chapter 13. You can read it yourself. Been through that in many other studies. But that's how I look at this whole thing. Um, I say, good. It's good that he's mentioning the King James Bible. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we'll be able to have at least some freedom in the future. However long it would be, I don't know, but at least they're mentioning the King James Bible. That's how I look at the thing. Okay, so um, give me your thoughts on it. Put them in the comment section down below, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.